At the very start of the movie, there is a protocol droid. I sense an unusual amount of fear for something as trivial as this trade dispute. A silver one in service to the Trade Federation. We have always known there are various casing options. The first droids we ever see are an R2 and two colors of 3PO. In fact, C-3PO himself has a silver right leg. We see a white protocol droid on Hoth and a silver one on Bespin. Nice to see a familiar face. It should be. How rude! These colors are completely meaningless. We know there are multiple options from the factory. It will be easy to have your 3PO painted or to buy customized plating. I'm TC-14 at your service. As etiquette demands, the droid introduces itself as TC-14. This way, please. Two things are slightly surprising. First, that number doesn't line up with C-3PO at all. Second, this droid has a woman's voice. Visually, TC-14 looks identical to a 3PO model. There are multiple different ways to explain this. My preferred option is the simplest. TC-14 is a 3PO like any other. The Trade Federation just selected silver when placing a bulk order. Make yourselves comfortable. My master will be with you shortly. As for the number, maybe that's a Federation naming convention. There's no reason a 3PO has to have 3PO in its name. That approach avoids adding or contradicting any law. The alternative is to fixate on some detail and create a new model. Originally, the 1999 Visual Dictionary avoided the topic. There was no reference to what model TC-14 was. It was 2002 before something went awry, the new essential guide to characters. It says that C-3PO uses a part from a TC droid, the Tranlang-3. Less than ideal, but it's okay for a TC series to exist. I draw the line at parts from 2006 and 2012. There is a significant difference in the 2012 expanded visual dictionary. It adds a data file box containing two factoids I can't abide. Both of these can be traced back to the new essential guide to droids. All the later lore assumes TC-14 cannot be a 3PO model. These two books explain the difference as being a single component. The Tranlang 3 communications module, first used in the TC series. A luxury variant of the base model, but still technically a TC 3PO. Like TC 14, all of them are said to use female voices. These ideas are completely unacceptable for me. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. They contradict existing law while adding nothing of value to the setting. Based on this newly invented law, the 2006 book claims something absurd that the most famous 3PO isn't really a 3PO at all. That our 3PO uses parts from a TC, so he's really one of those. By my own rules, I should only disregard this if older lore disagrees. Conveniently, everything contradicts those changes. The oldest I can find are from 1987 and 1990. Even back this far, it was clear. 3PO was a 3PO. He is a Cybot Galactica 3PO series protocol droid. The 3PO was defined as the type of droid that C-3PO is. We see a very similar situation for the internal components. Even in 1990, the Tranlang 3 had been defined. Each 3PO unit has an AA-1 Verbo brain and a Tranlang 3. These are the core of the droid series, what sets a 3PO apart from the competition. When Industrial Automaton built a copy, they used an AA-1 and a Tranlang 3. According to law from 2006, the 3PO series was designed around a Tranlang 2. After decades of production, a more expensive variant was created. These new TC droids would carry a Tranlang 3 instead of 2. Eventually, the Tranlang 3 became a standard part on all new production 3PO's. There is no basis for this idea, except for TC-14's name. The only supporting evidence comes from EV-99. How many languages do you speak? I am fluent in over 6 million forms of communication. Landed. Any fan of Star Wars could tell 99 that. A 3PO's Tranlang 3 supports 6 million languages. That implies she expects some variation in 3PO specifications. To be fair, C-3PO has spent time in a Jawa sandcrawler. Don't shoot, don't shoot. There's no guarantee how original all his parts are. The 2006 New Essential Guide seems to be the problem. It implies the 3PO was built with a Tranlang 2. Personally, I think 3PO's were given Tranlang 3's for a reason. The reason is that both machines have the numeral 3 in the name. Now, for no reason at all, I think we should look at a different droid. A J9 worker drone from Roche Hive. In the new book, J9's are stated to have a Tranlang 3 communications module. 
However, this is the one place we'd expect to see a Tranlang 2. The 1999 Essential Guide to Droids also describes the J9. That one specifies a Tranlang 2 module with 1 million languages. That mutated into a Tranlang 3 with only 1 million languages. These can't both be right, and one makes less sense than the other. I reckon that proves the new Essential Guides are sometimes wrong. Where they contradict, we'll assume the original version is correct. Claiming C-3PO isn't a 3PO, well, that contradicts everything. I completely reject the idea of a TC series with different internals. If we take that difference away, there's really no substance to the newly invented model. There is one characteristic left for you to base a 3PO variant on. What? What did you say? The ambassadors are Jedi Knights, I believe. Unlike every protocol droid of the original movies, TC-14 has a female voice. Is that enough to justify an entirely new model number? Given that they use the same translation hardware, I think not. I conclude that the model doesn't exist. There is no TC series. C-3PO and TC-14 have identical hardware. If the TC series was meant to be a female variant of the 3PO, we'd expect some new parts. Protocol droids are built to be generic and neutral. A Twi'lek would notice a lack of headtails. Wookiees would see a 3PO as short and hairless. However, they would all agree, 3PO is a metal man. That's no gynoid. The droid is an android. I'll always remember you, Fry. Memory deleted. Of course, there's no such thing as a male or female droid. When a droid turns up in a list of characters, Star Wars does it correctly. The sex is listed as NA because droids are non-biological. In the case of Artu and 3PO, inapplicable masculine programming. That's by far the third most common sex for a Star Wars character. It also tells us the answer. No, you don't need to create a TC series. There aren't any unique parts. It's all done in software. You'd never find a female voice box for a translator droid. To be fit for purpose, their vocabulator can accurately produce any sound. Our C-3PO could mimic any voice or accent in the galaxy. Right. What did he say? Said as you say, don't know. He only chopped him down because he couldn't see the view no more. What's he mumbling? We know this to be true. In the Ewok village, 3PO imitates the sound of TIE fighters. Laser cannons, lightsabers, even Vader breath. There's nothing remarkable about TC-14 having feminine programming. It certainly doesn't justify a new model of droid. Cybot Galactica would offer both options and any color you like. It can't be a difficult operation either. Toshi Station could probably manage it. Okay. Turn this into a woman. <laughs> I'm serious. So am I. Most people don't really care, and most droids don't come with programming options. Nor do they have options for gloss and matte or color. Books from 2006 and 2012 fixated on this detail. They consider TC-14 to be the template for a new model, instead of a minor variation. From there, it makes sense to distinguish the TC by making them mostly female. In 2006, that's understandable. When designing a droid, that's usually decided for the entire series at once. However, in 2012, things got worse. The expanded visual dictionary felt the need to explain why. It claimed that feminine programming is traditional for protocol droids, at least for ones in diplomatic service. As far as I can see, there is no basis for that idea. Diplomatic service is the standard environment for a 3PO unit. We don't see one with feminine programming until the prequel era. The only evidence we have, C-3PO, is a counterexample. If there were such a tradition, Cybot Galactica would use a different design. You wouldn't make an android if you know it'll end up with feminine programming. Or if you would, don't pretend it's for the sake of tradition. The 2006 book makes no mention of this supposed tradition. Feminine droids are uncommon, but sometimes they happen, and that's fine. Oh, excuse me. Let's quickly take a look at a couple of examples. The first one I always think of is 99. That is, a Merindata Model EV. This comes from the original trilogy, in Jabba's Palace. A spindly thing with a bad attitude and inhuman form. We have been without an interpreter since our master got angry with our last protocol droid and disintegrated him. The EV series are droids built to supervise other droids. Jabba's example, EV-99, is loved by the fans. 
At least I assume she's popular. I've never heard a complaint. You're a feisty little one, but you'll soon learn some respect. 99 has three tiny eyes, which is not standard for her model. The mouth flap is perhaps her strangest feature. Maybe her masters want a visual cue that the EV is working. The duties of a supervisor droid are mostly related to speech. 99 is as evil as a machine could possibly be, so let's move on. P.T. I have no understanding of the word EXTERMINATE! From the prequel era, the first one I think of is Dexter's Waitress. So much to see you, honey! Jedi by the looks of him. This is a very simple machine. There exist many variations on the concept. A competing design of droid might be the R10, a self-propelled serving tray. You can accomplish much the same thing with a shelf on an R2 unit. R2, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, I can see you're serving drinks, but this place is dangerous. All of these droids have to stand out in some way, and this one chose a striking design. The WA-7 Waitress is only moderately more agile than R2-D2. Durrell, beyond the outer rim, most of them cloner. For a customer-facing role, though, having a face may be an advantage. You want a cup of jar with you? Oh yes, thank you. The final example is an LE model from Cybot Galactica. That designation was actually used twice centuries ago. The older of the two is an LE repair droid. Their primary function is ship repair, much like an astromech. Unlike an R2 unit, the LE can speak basic. Their humanoid form is closer to 99 than 3PO. No polished bronzium plating, just exposed joints and wiring. This one is not specifically an android, but has masculine programming. As a secondary role, the LE droid is the radio man. A freighter captain like Dash Rendar has other priorities. An LE can handle the landing permits on your behalf. No, I don't have a landing permit. Oh, wait, wait a minute, let me explain! This brings us to another LE model from 300 years ago. That's three times older than the 3PO series. We can tell there were older protocol droids, since that's what an LE is. The LE manifest droid is based on 3PO's ancestor. Instead of etiquette, a manifest droid knows about paperwork. What had been a secondary function of a repair droid was now the sole purpose. There's no need for much translation. A dozen languages would be plenty. The critical knowledge is of spaceport regulations and red tape. Like the R3 and R4, this is a droid for a different market. Han Solo likes astromech droids and treadwells. They're very useful in repairing his ship. Check it at the other end. <laughs> Wait a second. You alright? He doesn't have much patience for C-3PO and would never buy one. Sir, uh, sir, shut him down. <laughs> However, you might be able to sell an LE manifest droid to a freighter captain. If I owned a Gitrock 720 and an R4, this would be my second droid purchase. Though based on a protocol droid, there are certain hardware changes. Perhaps most notable is the waist. There is no gap in the droid plating. Most droids of that kind have a flexible section at the waist somewhere. We can assume the LE has a more limited range of motion than most droids. While that might work in a throne room, it's safer to have the waist covered. Aside from that, an LE has only one notable feature. Her feet are said to be magnetic. That would serve no purpose for a diplomat, but aboard ship it's quite helpful. There you go. Now you just walk around like you're in pumps. How do you know what it's like to walk in pumps? I didn't always work in space. Cybot Galactica has made one other modification from the base protocol droid. Princesses and senators are content with the 3PO series. Freighter captains tend to lose patience when dealing with etiquette droids. As part of fixing this, LE droids were built with feminine programming. A droid's personality is a very important feature. That's why the R2 is so popular. By having an endearing attitude, a droid can avoid the off switch. The Empire may be gracious enough. Thank you. Let's bring this back around to TC-14. I have always considered her to be a normal 3PO droid. There are millions of droids, so the names must be more elaborate than what we hear. Droids would have to select a locally unique name. There's also a preference for putting the model number in the name. That would mean TC-14 and TC-3 are normal names for 3PO droids. There is no TC model, and C-3PO is a 3PO. All the hardware is identical. No 3PO's use Tranlang 2's. Nor is there any merit to the claim of traditional feminine programming. 
That seems to be an invention of 2012, with no basis in Star Wars. As a standard 3PO, TC-14 can't come from a mostly female production run. We've seen what Cybot Galactica does when making a new kind of protocol droid. If you wanted a protocol droid of a different model, LE would be the one. Manifest droids were made for customers just like the Trade Federation. Let's not try to infer any law from TC-14. If you've seen a few of our videos and feel like we've earned your support, please take time to check that you're still subscribed to the channel. Leave a like, perhaps. Fiddle with the notification bell so you're notified as soon as we upload new videos. Why not join us on Discord? We promise it's only half as bad as that sounds. We've got seven canisters of CN20. I said we roll them in there and nerve gas the whole fucking nest. If you'd like to support us financially, consider becoming a patron or clicking join under this video. YouTube members get access to Imperial rank insignia in the comments section. What, you think you're some kind of Jedi waving your hand around like that? I'm a Toydarian! Mind tricks don't work on me! Only money! No money, no parts, no deal! <laughs>